tried and there is no role of antibiotics in bronchiolitis. Now this is case 3, one and a half year old child, recurrent episodes of cough since 4 months of age. He has been hospitalized for brain history, hospitalized 4 times. First admission at 4 months of age for NRTI, treated with antibiotics for 7 days. ECHO had shown a moderate size VSD which closed after 1 month. Second admission at 9 months of age for bronchial pneumonia, treated with antibiotics, steroids and beta agonist nebulization. Third admission at 1 year of age for bronchitis, again treated with nebulization, steroids and antibiotics. Fourth admission at 1 and a half years of age, treated with antibiotics, maxal, magnesium sulfate, nebulization, stage flex play down was normal. So every time he has been treated for, for LRTI with the whole thing. Antibiotic steroid nebulization. We don't know what it is. He had an episode of diarrhea one month back. He has been put on butyrosinoid inhaler for the past two months. There is history of query asthma in the grandfather, great grandfather, leading to breathlessness. He has been exclusively breastfed for seven months and now has been weaned on to milk and biscuits. So this is long history of this. For examination is weighing 8 kilos, height is 73, other examination findings are normal in this child. So our summary is one and a half year old with different LRTI requiring nebulization as family history of asthma. He has failure to fly currently on an MDI. That's our summary of this case. If this is asthma, why is there failure to fly? One question. If asthma, why antibiotics are needed every time? If asthma, why extreme the third admission showed bronchopneumonia? These are my questions to you. Everybody said this is asthma. So now these are my questions to you. Okay, the first answer is not properly treated asthma. That is why he is failing to thrive. Second question, why does he require antibiotics in it? Maybe nobody did that scoring system. So everybody gave antibiotics for every MRTI. So that's another positive. Why third admission for a bronchopneumonia? If asthma is very ill, x ray should have been normal in the third emission. Third emission? He got infection, maybe he had bronchial asthma, got infected and had a bronchitis. Fine, agreed to everything. But it doesn't sound proper. No? Why should an asthma have four admissions? All four admissions starting at four months of age. So whether they were, somebody said celiac disease. Yes, celiac disease can come like this, but celiac disease can come first thing is anemia. Cystic fibrosis is a possibility here because he's had repeated it. So we have to think of other causes of chronic infections in the lung. So other chronic infections in the lung, congenital heart disease, GER can come like this. Immunodeficiency, HIV can come like this. He's also had a diarrhea episode one month back. Lung malformation, maybe there is a congenital adenomyotic cyst or malformation that is causing this. Cystic fibrosis is a possibility. Now, out of these, his echo showed a VSD first time, but it has cleared off. So, they are congenital heart and lung. Can all these be there? It can be there, so we have to work him up. Now, GR, milk scan is normal. So, GR is out. HIV is negative. Serum immunoglobulin is normal. Chest x ray is normal. HRCD just shows a lymph node. There is no uh, malformation. But now we got an infant sitting there. So is this tuberculosis? So was he normally diagnosed as asthma and he turned out to be TB? Immunoglobin. IgE is also normal. So now is this asthma? IgE is normal. So we don't know what we are dealing with. So now we come to a diagnosis of TB. Maybe from 4 months of age he is having TB. We can have a family history of great grandfather having very asthma. No family history of TB. Okay, so now we do a Manjo test here. So possibility is ruled out, GR is ruled out, immunodeficiency is ruled out, cystic fibrosis is ruled out. Lymph node on CT we got is this TB malignancy and cause of failure. Manjo is negative, GL for AFB, gastric lavage for TB is negative, ESR is fine. But then TB is doubtful and TB should not come with recurrent episodes. We should just have one episode going on and on and on. So now what are we dealing with? What does this child have? He's had four admissions for possible LRTI. He's had one diarrhea at the past. Cystic fibrosis, okay. Sweat flow is negative. Malnourished. He's malnourished. He is malnourished. 
So if you think his diet is the problem, he is only on milk and biscuits. Yes. So if he is on a poor diet, he is malnourished. He is malnourished. He is more prone to infection. So maybe this is all PM. Yes. Right? This is all PM. That lymph node isolated, non-necrotic is not TB. Every lymph node is not TB. For TB to have lymph nodes means necrotic lymph nodes, caseating lymph nodes. This is not caseated. This is not caseated. This is not necrotic. It's a solitary node. That can occur with any infection. It can be a reactive because every time he is getting lung infection, it's a reactive lymph node. We do not know. So this is not TP. So maybe his problem is only related to PM. Then why is the grand great grandfather having asthma? There is nothing like significance of size on the medium. It more important is your necrosis and caseation. You could have no message for every person in one thing is great grandfather means I'm talking 80 years back, 90 years back. Who diagnosed asthma at that time? Who had MDIs at that time? Every old patient at that time with emphysema, COPD was asthma. So maybe he was a COPD patient. We don't know. So every breathlessness is not asthma. So we are not sure whether there is a family tendency of asthma. So in this child, asthma and great grandfather is doubtful. Maybe he was a COPD patient, maybe he was emphysema. Sira Munji is normal, so again your asthma seems less likely. No documented means. Nowadays, everyone LRTI gets an embolization. Diet is poor, he is underweight, micronutrient deficiency, so he is getting recurrent infections. He has a GI infection also, so mostly like, this is all related to his nutrition. And all other immunodeficiencies have been ruled out here. So what did we do? We modified the diet. Six months we followed up, he was asymptomatic. So this was only dietary problems. What diet was given? What diet? We have given him regular food that he is supposed to eat at home. No milk, no satellite, no parrots, no biscuits. Okay, whatever if they are eating at home, the same diet he has to make. Two hourly feeds that you give. You add sugar, you add oil into the feeds. So then you increase the calories. So this is what was it. So we wrongly treated as So not all recurrent respiratory infections are asthma. Not all respiratory infections are related to saliva TB. Okay, and complete history and examination are really essential to prevent unnecessary investigation. Now, this is a 10 month old boy. He is having cough for 7 days, fever for 3 days, and breathlessness for 2 days. Can you analyze this? Is it viral or bacteria? Started off with viral, right? Started off with cough, so started off with viral. He never fever after four days of cough. So maybe there is a super added infection. And now he's got blood test. So maybe he's having a super added bacterial pneumonia. Started off as a viral, then develop a super added bacterial pneumonia. Now this blood test is a pneumonia. How did he get pneumonia? Either he got a bacterial pneumonia or he aspirates. And that aspiration became second bacterial pneumonia. On examination, he is distressed, he has a respiratory rate of 60 per minute. There are suprasternal, intercostal, substernal interactions with flaring of LAP, right? Chest examination, so this is tachypnea, right? Everything is there and this is pneumonia. Chest examination reveals decreased air entry in the right subscapular area with bilateral disease. Diagnosis? We are thinking of pneumonia, right? In this child, he is tachypneic, he is having decreased air entry. So pneumonia. My question is, why is this child having, uh, sorry, I've already come to the right answer. Why is this child having wheezing in a pneumonia? Why that will be easy, If you say this is pneumonia, why is it wheezing? Bronchial pneumonia is also in the alveolar. Wheezing has to be in the bronchus. So that means there is something in the alveoli, there is something in the bronchus. So there is bronchitis, there is alveolitis. He said he started with viral. So maybe there is viral bronchitis and then now there he is developed a bacterial pneumonia. So our diagnosis may be lying or bronchitis with the pneumonia. His x-ray shows right lower zone consolidation with bilateral hyperinflation and steeple sign. Now steeple sign is the trachea, narrowing of the trachea at the level of the just below the lines. I'll see if I have the X-ray of this. 
तुम्हारी निमोनिया ना हो सेम थिंग सुपर एडिड बैक्टीरिया और ये एस्पिरेट हो दिस इज अस पीपल सन यू कैन सी दैट दिस नारोल यू सी अ इट्स लाइक अ चर्च यू सी इन द चर्च द सीपल सिमिलर टू दैट नारोइंग ऑफ द